But welcome to the mini cast. <laughs> Our goal for this mini cast is for people to get to know you, as you have probably been the longest employee standing with Personalized Health Center. So, how long you've been with us? It might be five. Five? Yeah, it could be. Could yeah, be. Yeah, because I want to say it was end of 2018. Yeah. Does that makes sense. Well, how long have you been back to school for? This is my third year. So since 2021. Okay. So it is. So it might years. be five. Yeah, yeah, it might be five years. So Caroline, <laughs> Caroline started with us. It was you, Kayla, and then you transitioned back to school, right? Mm -hmm. Three years ago to become, I'll let you tell the story, but yes. So Caroline has been with us for five years. <laughs> So longest standing employee, and you've gone through a lot of transitions actually with us. Remember you went through pre-COVID, right, where you're working, and then you actually started seeing clients when we started doing consulting out of a gym. Then COVID yeah. hit to things shutting down, right? And then you decided to go back to school full time. I'm going to ask you, first question is, what got you into nutrition first? So what wanted you to start working with people and their nutrition? In terms of getting into nutrition, it started back in high school where I was having a lot of like stomach issues and I went more of the conventional route, got some like testing done and there wasn't really anything wrong. And then my mom had brought me to see like a naturopath and a nutritionist. And then based off of their recommendations, I kind of switched the way I was eating and noticed I was feeling better and like food was making a difference. So based off of like those experiences, I liked the opportunity to kind of like make some changes without going more of like a natural route and kind of figuring out what foods work for me and how can I improve my health without having to go on like medication if I can. And so how old were you at this point? Were you in high school? Um, just I think I started having problems probably in like grade nine, grade 10. And then kind of all through high school, still had the issues. They'd kind of like come and go. And then once I graduated, I started cooking more for myself, started figuring out kind of what foods worked for me. And then based off of kind of digging more and more, it did take a few years. But once I kind of figured out what works for me. It... And so what year did you join the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition then? Was it right out of high school or did you wait a year? What were you doing in between? Tell us that little story. Yeah, so I went right out of high school. I actually did a program through Algonquin College for hospitality and tourism management yeah. and thought that that's what I wanted to do. It turns out I didn't really like it. And then at that point, I had gotten more into like working out and nutrition and I was enjoying that stuff. And I found CSNN afterwards. So I think I started in 2017 is when I went. 2016, 2017. And then I did it full time and then started working at PHC pretty shortly after. So, so what you're saying is you finished your diploma program, went to Canadian school, didn't know, mm -hmm. realized you don't want to be working in the hospitality, said, I'm going to go into nutrition. And that's where it began. Yeah, pretty awesome. much. It was. So, we were your first like nutrition, like health clinic that you worked at. It was, yeah. That's first that's thing awesome. I applied. It was actually the only thing I applied to, <laughs> which is kind of funny. I came in, dropped off my resume, and then I think I I think someone else was hired. And then I got a call back a few months later. And then it ended up working out. And five years Absolutely. later. And you live close too, right? Like I think people don't realize yes. that you have always been in the vicinity of like less than well, you're when you're living with you were probably about five to ten, but now you're within like 500 meters mm -hmm. <laughs> or a kilometer yes. uh, of living uh, from the office. So, which is great. And so, so in terms of being here, obviously you've been here five years. So you've gone through mm -hmm. probably, I think in total 49, we've, we, I've worked with 4,900. So you're probably around for about a good three, 3,500 people you've probably seen come through mm -hmm. here. And as I've always said, you guys are more responsible for their success because you've made sure you've booked them in, called them, and you do a lot of our lifestyle calls now, right? So you help clients yeah. in between their appointments to make sure if they have any questions or concerns or any issues. So what is the common theme that you hear from clients that you've seen over that five years, what's the one thing, if you were to pinpoint one or two things mm -hmm. that you see in common that people 
all struggle with because I think that a lot of clients think that it's what we want to share with them is that it's not just you. It's we all struggle with those similar issues and hearing them from you is going to be great because you do the phone calls, you do the bookings, you've done it all. You've done consulting. So you have been there throughout the 360 of it. So Mm -hmm. what are one to two things that you have commonly heard from clients as complaints or issues that they face trying to achieve better health? I think that it's funny because I feel like you hear so many things, but they kind of have like similar themes. I think one of the biggest ones is people trying to kind of overhaul what they're used to and like kind of getting in their heads about it. So I find like a lot of clients, they're like, it's, they like don't know how to cook differently or how to, (laughs) or how to prepare stuff differently. They're used to their routine. Yeah. Like it's kind of, I think it's actually funny because I feel like that's like the thing I struggle most with is I'm very much like a routine person. I know like if I have structure and routine, I'm usually pretty good. But the second it gets thrown upside down, that's where I find I have a hard time. And I notice that with clients a lot where they're kind of it's when it's good and they can like do their meal prep. It's good. But then if things get like turned upside down, it's um where they struggle most. And at the beginning when like the motivation's high, it's usually pretty good. And then they have to like start finding new recipes to keep things interesting and kind of like not get bored of stuff. So so what you're saying is the common theme is people get bored of the repetition of food that they're eating and Mm -hmm. they struggle with finding time and energy and motivation to find new recipes because those are the ones that worked in the past but they're not ones that are going to bring them to the 2.0 version of themselves because those foods are sometimes linked back to some of the complaints that they're Mm -hmm. trying to achieve right and so how do you what are some of the steps that you walk them through like what are the probably two or three things that you remind them of constantly when that happens what what are some things that you tell them I feel like one of the first things is usually that it's like, it's normal to feel like you don't know what to cook, where to start, kind of like what to look for. And then after that, it's usually a lot of just like, find one new recipe a week, test something out, look up some different recipes. And then usually too, I'll kind of give them options of different types of recipes. So whether that's looking up like paleo recipes, at least then, you know, it's like gluten-free, dairy-free you can swap out a few things or like add a couple extra things in and then just kind of trial and error, like test out different ways of meal prepping, get tools that make things easier, like the Instant Pot air fryer. Um, Yeah. I think, I feel like it's hard to answer because it kind of depends on the individual where it's like kind of figuring out, is it just that they're bored of what they're eating or it's like not knowing how to cook stuff or like what part of the puzzle they're missing to make it more enjoyable. And and that's the reason why I'm asking you that question is because that's what we got to dig around with, right? Is that Mm -hmm. we as practitioners have to dig around and ask those clients, those questions for us to figure out what that sticking point is so that we can give them the steps to be like, okay, if that's your sticking point, here's where you need to kind of go Mm -hmm. into more and Sometimes it's not going to really connect to the overall end goal. Sorry, it's not going to overall to the immediate short-term goal, but it's going to connect to your goal long-term because what you're trying to help them out with, based on what you're telling me, is that you want to help them retain and maintain that result. Yes, yeah, because it's like exciting and new and fun in the beginning, but then it doesn't always stay that way. Like you're going to have days where it's just kind of like, it's like kind of boring, but you just have to like keep finding new ways to make it more exciting and kind of like evolving as you're changing what you're working towards or. And so yourself, you said that that was one of your issues, right? So what is one or what are some things that you have done to, obviously you said you've gone through transition of digestive health. Mm -hmm. You went through, so you went through digestive health, then you went through training. What are some of the things that you do for your diet to help you with variety, for an example, what are some of the things that you do? Like, what are some of the websites? What are some of the foods? What's what's Caroline's tricks to helping her with finding variety? Yeah, I think one thing that has helped me is I do enjoy cooking. So I do have like that advantage side to it. I find in terms of finding different 
recipes, usually I'll go to like Pinterest because then you can kind of find, you can see what they look like. It's usually, it's more of like a picture board. So you can kind of look up what you're looking for, see if it looks good. And then you can kind of search keywords as well too. So yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. So what do you type up mm -hmm. when Caroline is looking for a recipe? She goes yeah. to Pinterest. What do you type into the search engine? That's what we. That's what we. I want to know. I want. What is what is Caroline no. search for? Yeah, usually it'll be. I'll either do like if I'm feeling something, I'll say like paleo, whatever, and then that way at least I know if I want to do like a burrito bowl. I can like look up burrito bowl, but make modifications based off of like what I'm looking for. So if I know it's going to be like gluten-free, dairy-free, for instance, then I can kind of like take out the sour cream. I don't really need it, but maybe I could put some like buffalo sauce on it or add some mango salsa on the side. Everybody should be aware that the reason why we have the buffalo sauce and the primal kitchen <laughs> in the office for sale is because Caroline has a little bit of an addiction to it and she is the one who introduced yeah. us to it. So we have it in stock all the time for her yeah. special needs as well. No, I think I oh. buy it by the case too. Yeah. <laughs> so how much time do you spend in the kitchen per week? I'd say that's actually changed. So I used to do like a full Sunday, eight hours, well, eight hours, but you'd spend a full day meal prepping, getting everything done, ready to go. And then now I would say it's probably closer to four to six hours, but I kind of split it up throughout the week. So that was one thing I kind of switched now being back in school. I find it harder to kind of have like a full day free of just like, I'm going to stay home and cook. Now it kind of gets broken down. And so how many hours, hours are you in school? Time. How many hours are you in school I per, think per week? 30 hours. 30. And then like you work, class. and then you also work 10 to 12 hours a week, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah. you can see that the balancing has changed for your cooking. So you've had to make that adjustment. Yeah. So, so on average, you cook, what's an average timeline that you cook? Two hours, an hour, or is it just a couple of, do you make a bucket? I, like, so let's say, for example, you Google burrito bowl. Do you make mm -hmm. enough for two, three days? Do you make enough for one day? How, how does, how do you organize your week in terms of that sense? In terms of, Usually I'll kind of try and make whatever I'm making. I try and make as much of it as possible just so that at least I have food for two to three days and I might eat the same thing for a couple of days. But then the next time I'm cooking again, I know I'm just going to switch things up. So if I have whatever I'm making, I usually make extra so that there's tons of leftovers. You're not like scrambling last minute, but so give us an example of how much yeah. you, so I, I want to hear, no, because I think that people yeah. struggle with this. And I think that me and Melissa, I always say that we've been married together 16 years and she still makes mistakes with portions of how much to actually prep at once, right? Mm -hmm. So give us an example in terms of if you were making a burrito bowl, how much meat would you make at once? So now you live with you yourself and you've got, you've got yourself and your partner, right? So how much meat would you make in one sitting for the two of you? I'd probably cook, like usually we'll get the big Costco packs and then okay. I'll just cook the whole thing. Of chicken breast, chicken usually, thigh, or the uh, four uh, chicken? Usually or... chicken breast. Chicken breast? Usually like the whole thing of chicken breast and then see okay. how long that lasts. And then when I start to run low, then I'll go on to like a beef or something for the end of the week. But I'd say we probably go through for two of us. I feel like we go through a lot of food, but it's yeah. usually like at least one big thing of the chicken breast from Costco. We'll also usually keep like frozen salmon on hand that you yeah. can like thaw it quickly, the individual ones. And then we'll probably go through some like the packs of bison. Gotcha. The three so, packs from Costco too. So when you make chicken breast, you make it by the flat. That's what I call them. And yeah. then when you make uh, ground meat, would you make one, two or three packages at a time? No, we make three. Three, yeah. Okay. So, so it's good to know. because It's usually like three. Perfect. And so how many meals are you eating in a day with that? So are you eating three meals, four meals? How many meals would you like on average get eat in a day just yourself? Just myself probably be about two meals of those. Okay. Yeah. Two, depending on like, sometimes I'll do four meals, but usually it's like two meals. With your schedule that. all over there. And gotcha. then I'll have like, make my own breakfast as I go. In the morning, usually like eggs or leftovers. Sometimes I'll have like ground meat for breakfast, but usually the meal prep's just like lunch, dinner. And so where did you find your passion for cooking? Was it like, did you always have that? Did you grow up around the kitchen or did you 
like where did that start cooking I did my mom actually cooks quite a bit so growing up she always let us she'd buy like kids cookbooks and involved us in the cooking aspect of stuff it wasn't I'd say like all throughout growing up, it was something I really enjoyed doing and kind of experimenting in the kitchen, testing out new recipes and learning different ways of cooking too. Like I find as you're, cause I didn't always cook like meat, veggies, protein kind of stuff. But now that I am, it did take a couple of years for me to like figure out what recipes actually taste good and like what to look for in recipes as well. Yeah, I think that people think that, I think that's important what you just said there is it took you a year to two years to three years to figure out how to change your eating systems because a lot of people yeah. want to lose weight right away, but then they can't retain it, but they forget that it's the rest, you fall back to the recipes that you know mm -hmm. that give you the skill to retain and maintain it. So it's like your kitchen skill is definitely going to be a part of your retention of progression around your results if you're looking for body composition. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you were to give someone a tip on cooking, what's one thing that you could tell them or one or two things that you can inspire someone to be like uh, something that you learn? Like, I don't know what's the, I guess I'm trying to ask you is how would you inspire someone to get more in the kitchen? Like, what would you say to someone as a place to start uh, to get more comfortable in the kitchen? Is it going to Pinterest and finding a recipe? Is it buying new tools? Is it what what would you tell someone if someone said, I hate the kitchen? What would you tell that person? That's a good question. I feel like I'd probably start off with like, if there's a meal that they really enjoy eating, if they can find like a healthier option to that recipe, try and find something like that so that it's like a meal you're excited for and something that you can kind of use down the road where it may not be like an everyday thing, but it's a good tool to have in your pocket and then as you're going kind of like test out you might train the thought yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but kind of find I think that's um, an excellent tip I think that's an excellent tip you're yeah someone... like I feel like yeah I was gonna say like I feel like a lot of the stuff that I started doing like I used to make my own lunches back when I think I was in grade eight and I was making like I think I took a Campbell soup of tomato macaroni and it was like shredded cheese in it yeah. it was and then it's going from like Obviously, I didn't go overnight from that to making like veggies and stuff. So it did take time of like kind of figuring out what recipes were. And I would usually start off by like looking up like healthier pizza options or healthier pasta options and kind of like modifying the recipes and finding foods that I enjoy. And then also tools is another thing. What's Caroline's favorite tool? The air fryer. Oh, uh, yes. I, everybody's. The Instapot is good too, though. I've started using it, but I only ever use it for like cooking rice and stuff. And it took me two years to use it. So, yeah, no, I definitely think the air fryer, especially for like breakfast, potatoes, French fries, that kind of stuff. And like even the meats and stuff too. It's like way easier. Set it on, walk away, and it takes care of itself. It's great. I think that you, I think that's actually a really good tip. I never thought about that. It's just, saying, hey, what's your favorite food, like favorite junk food? Now, yeah. just be inspired to go in the kitchen and try to make it yourself and try to figure out how to add more protein to it or more vegetables mm -hmm. or reduce the fats or reduce the carbohydrates. So that way you can still have it a part of your plan, but you've made the better version of it. And it's inspiring. And then you just get comfortable being in the kitchen more because you're like, oh, I, yeah. I took this one thing, I deconstructed it. And I built it better. It's kind of like what you did with probably the tomato soup, the macaroni and the cheese. You're like, okay, I'll just start with this. But then eventually you learn how to make the soup yourself. You know what yeah. I mean? So you're like, I can make a better version of this maybe with carrots or a stew mm -hmm. and just make, so that's great. Good. And so yeah. uh, what is Caroline up to now? So you are still working here. Mm -hmm. And so tell people what you do outside of here. So you're in school. What are you in school for? Yeah. So I went back to school full time for dietetics. Yeah. So I'm at Ottawa U right now taking my certification in third year. Amazing. Um, yeah. So I just kind of wanted to further education, same field. It was kind of one of those things where I wasn't too sure if I would want to do nutrition long term. And then I decided I did want to do it. So branched off into dietetics. So, so all of our clients inspired you to still want to do nutrition yes, and keep working yeah. with people. So that's great. That's good. See, all of you are a part of that process. So that's good. Yeah. 
And then in terms of what's one thing before we finish off is what's one thing that you would say to clients after being around 3,500 people, right? You have been a part of 3,500 people's different journey in nutrition. And I think that's amazing. What's one thing that you would say, or maybe one to two things, because obviously it's hard to say, one, what's one thing you just kind of would want to remind people about or a tip or a suggestion? What's one thing you would just want to say to them to understand more about nutrition or their journey? What's one thing that you would want to share with them that you've really learned in the past three to four years? And that if your best friend came to you and said, here's what I'm thinking of doing, what's that one thing that you would say to them? I feel like I would say, take it one step at a time. Like don't try and do too much at once. Try and like overhaul everything overnight because then it just it's overwhelming it's a lot and then just kind of whether that means if you're buying all your meals out if you can start cooking at home and then kind of progressing into things rather than just trying to do everything at once and then having a harder time to maintain good awesome well that's a great tip right progression yeah right it's i think we can all say people try to race through this and mm -hmm. it does work. And we've all done those little sprints of like diets and stuff like that. But I think at the end of the day, what we have seen is the people who take their time and really focus on those one or three things for that three week or four week cycle that they're trying to focus on. We see mm -hmm. better success long term because they're learning that they're retaining it. They get really good at it. And then we give them something else. And they're there. Mm -hmm. And Caroline is in the middle of those calls, making sure that I'm the one programming. I, I say my job's much easier than Caroline's and Amanda's because they've got to book you in with the schedule. And then you've got to make sure that you're keeping them kind of in the program, making sure that they're feeling motivated and all their questions and stuff are mm -hmm. concerned. So I would say that's a pretty hard job. So that's great. Okay. Well, Caroline, thank you for coming in. Thanks for taking time to share and let us know more about you. And as you guys know, Caroline is the person who calls you. She could be on the phone. Yeah. She's calling to make sure you guys are good and texting you and sending you emails. She's been a part of the team for five years. And, uh, and what you guys should know is a little secret is Caroline is also our tech support. Usually we call her if any oh, yeah. computers or anything break down, <laughs> we call her and uh, sometimes her dog is in the office. So she's been here yeah. forever and she does tech support for even my parents who are in the building sometimes. So uh, she's got some hidden, that's her hidden talent. So thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing some more insight. Thanks for having me. All right, Caroline, take care. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.